This router is designed to offer low radiation Wi-Fi. In this short video, I'm going to give you a brief description of the router. I'm going to show it to you in operation with a quick overview of the Wi-Fi issue. I'm going to do a short comparison of this router with a normal modem router. I'm going to walk you through the functionalities of the software so that you can appreciate how it works. I'm going to explain how to set up a low radiation Wi-Fi solution and I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. But before I say anything else, I just want to make clear that the safest solution for connecting to the internet is a hardwired connection which allows you to surf the internet with zero Wi-Fi radiation exposures. That's the safest way of doing it. That said, a low radiation Wi-Fi router is better than a normal strength Wi-Fi router which is why I'm sharing this information with you. What I have here is a standard ASUS router fitted with special JRS Eco Wi-Fi software. So it's this software which offers low radiation or eco radiation capability. So there are currently three versions of the software available which offer slightly different functionalities. The software I'm reviewing today, which is installed in this router, is the Eco Wi-Fi 03 version. Now this is a router which is designed to be used with a modem. So your internet signal comes from your internet service provider be it cable or DSL, it goes into your modem and then you connect your modem to your router which allows you to have multiple computers or devices on the same network and in this case it allows you to set up a low radiation Wi-Fi solution. Now I'm going to show you the router in action. So here you can see I've got my modem on the left of the desk, my router in the middle and my laptop sat on the right. Here's my MF meter which measures radio frequency radiation which means it can measure the Wi-Fi signal. Now this is with the Wi-Fi deactivated. Watch the lights in the left hand column on the meter as I activate the Wi-Fi. The low levels of radiation are shown in green at the bottom of the column. As the radiation increases, the column lights up going from green to orange to red, which indicates the higher readings. Now I'm going to go into the router menu and activate the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi signal. You can hear the ticking of the beacon signal now from the router. Watch the numbers on the top right of the display on the acoustometer. They fluctuate a little bit, but you can see that the exposure levels are around 4 volts per meter at the highest. This is with the transmit power set to the default setting of 30 milliwatts. Now watch as I lower the transmit power to 1 milliwatt and I save that setting. So I've set it to 1 milliwatt. And I'm going to reset the acoustimeter. So watch the readings again in the top right of the acoustimeter display. And you can see that the exposure levels are now in the one to two volts per meter range. So significantly reduced. So watch what happens as I change the transmit power now to 60, not that one here, 60 milliwatts. 
Can we change it to 60 and save it? So initially, like last time, the beacon stops. And then when it starts again, watch the display on the acoustic meter. See, it's, we've got pulses. We've got regular pulses now at six volts per meter. Now, this is an uncommon setting and would only be needed for a very large house. 60 milliwatts, very uncommon. Now, watch the readings as I deactivate the Wi Fi on the router. Going back to the home page and I'm going to disable the Wi Fi. Let's just compare with a regular modem router. This is my Netgear with a Wi-Fi deactivated. It's a crude comparison. I'm not in a laboratory, so my meter does occasionally pick up stray signals from elsewhere. And for the purposes of this video, I'm taking readings a little bit too close. Ideally, I'd need to be about 15 feet away. Just listen to the difference as I activate the Wi-Fi. This machine gun sound you can hear is the Wi-Fi beacon. It transmits a signal at 10 times a second. That's to say 10 Hertz. With the low radiation router, the pulsing frequency is reduced to once a second. That's 10 times less. So first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna go into the, onto the menu page. So this is the address which you need to type into your browser. So I've got it in my notepad which I'm going to paste into the browser so it takes it straight there. And you can see this is, so this is the menu uh, of the router. And you've probably seen something like this before if you're used to installing uh, routers and modems. Um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. There is, there is a lot of uh, functionality on offer here, but really we're not interested in most of it. Um, we just, I'm just going to explain to you some uh, very simple things. So the first thing you notice on this screen is you, if you scroll down, then um, it gives you information because uh, actually lo the local area network, which is functional, that's to say the Ethernet connection. So I'm, I'm, I am actually on the Ethernet connect connection for the purpose of this demonstration. And you can see that there is, um, this is the wireless 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, functionality here and below it is the wireless 5 gigahertz and so from this this home page here you can disable the 2.4 gigahertz for instance and you could this can be confirmed by looking at the actual router itself there's a, a blue light uh, to say when the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz is on and now the 2.4 gigahertz has gone off as I've done that and the same thing here is we can disable the 5 gigahertz frequency by clicking on that and again that's that's the blue light goes out the indicator light on the on the router itself so that's the first thing you can you can disable it so it's only working uh, on Ethernet uh, if you prefer if it's, so it's only working on the hardwired connection and the other thing I want to show you is that you can actually change the transmit power of the router. So you go into the advanced settings here, and this brings you to this page where you see there's, there's uh, a lot of um, different settings that you can change on this page. But uh, what we're interested in is actually the, the transmit power. And so the transmit power is actually set to one in this example because I've been I've been uh, doing some testing, but normally that would be as you uh, receive it when you buy this, uh, as it, sh it shipped, it's showing 30 uh, milliwatts uh, normally there. So that is actually set to the lowest. Um, and also, so that's on the 2.4 uh, gigahertz. So you could set that to, 
if you wanted really strong transmit power, then you set that to 60, and you come down here, and you would say you do save. And so that gives you 60 milliwatts transmit power, which is pretty powerful, uh, to say the least. Um, and uh, you can do the same here, exactly the same thing with the 5 gigahertz settings. So um, currently, let's see, where is it? Uh, transmit power, there we go. It's set to 1. Uh, so you could set that to... Uh, you could set that to 60 also, or 50 if you want, uh, and you could determine this, you, for instance, it, it really all depends on how far away your computer, your devices are located from the, the router and the thicknesses of your walls, things like that, as to what you need in terms of transmit power, but there, it's as simple as that, you just change the number, you save it, um, and that's set uh, to... 50 uh, here for the for, for the 5 gigahertz uh, and as I say it's set to 60 so I'm going to set that back down to 1 so because let's say I want the lowest um, setting possible uh, for Wi-Fi so I'll set that to 1 also and you wouldn't necessarily be using both um, frequencies here you would be, normally you'd be using one or the other uh, to to 2.4 or the 5. So that's um, that's the other thing I wanted to show you. And lastly, one I, what I want to show you is another functionality that this router has, and that is so that you can actually uh, schedule so that the Wi-Fi is deactivated at certain times of the day. And you could, so to do that, you're going to access restriction here. And you do you press on add, and this this sets up a rule, and you can do it. For instance, there it's set to do uh, Monday, uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and you can say add Friday in, or you could just set it to do it every day. And for instance, every day, if you want the Wi-Fi to be disabled between 11:30 and uh, 5 a.m then you will set those times, you will set disable wireless, and you set to save. And it's as simple as that. There we are. And so that brings you back there, and there you've got the rules, uh, you've got the different rules which have, uh, which have been added in. Um, and it's really as simple as that. And to go back to the main screen again, back, back to here. Uh, as I say, there are lots of other functionalities possible with this ruler, with this uh, router, but I just wanted to show you um, really the most important ones. It's very simple to set up this low radiation router. There are three devices we need to connect together, the modem, the router and the computer. Look at the red arrow here. That's where you connect the wire with the internet signal that comes from your telephone or cable company. Look at the green arrow. With an ethernet cable, you connect your modem to the WAN terminal on your low radiation router. Look at the blue arrow. This shows how you connect your router to your computer with another ethernet cable, which comes supplied. There are four LAN terminals on the router so you can hardwire up to four different computers. The big plus that this router offers is that it enables you to reduce your Wi-Fi radiation exposures whilst maintaining the same performance. That's to say you get the same data transmission capability you can stream, you can put multiple devices on this router, just like you can with a normal router, okay? And according to the manufacturer, you can achieve up to a 90% reduction in exposure levels. The second point is that it's possible to perform daily scheduled Wi-Fi deactivation directly from the system menu. So you can set it to automatically deactivate the Wi-Fi at certain times of the day. 
The third point I want to make is that there is actually a button on the router itself which allows you to manually deactivate the Wi-Fi functionality. So you can switch the Wi-Fi off at certain times of the day, whenever you want, just by pressing the button. Now for the cons, the, the disadvantages. Um, so if you already have a modem router, then this device is an additional expense. So the low radiation Wi-Fi does come at a cost, but I think this cost, in fact, I know this cost is justified in the sense of what it can do to help safeguard your health. The second point is that you will need to have an adapter to plug it into the electricity. I live in France, mine came with a French plug. In other, in other parts of Europe, um, it, it comes with a European plug. But when you, if you receive it, it will not have a, uh, if you're living in the US, uh, it doesn't, currently it's not supplied with a US plug. So you will need an adapter to be able to plug it into your uh, wall socket. And the third point is that you still need to disable the Wi-Fi on your modem because your router here is capable of, of giving you uh, low radiation Wi-Fi, but if you don't do anything with your modem, then it's still going to be pumping out Wi-Fi at um, normal levels. So that shouldn't be too difficult, but it might if you're... Uh, if, you're, if your uh, internet supply comes through the cable company, it might necessitate a, a, a phone call to the uh, cable company. Just to be clear, the safest way to connect to the internet is a hardwired connection. No doubt about that. That's a connection that you plug in. It might be inconvenient to plug in, but it's much safer. If you don't believe me, go and read the studies. So why might you be interested in this router? Because it offers you the possibility of making your Wi-Fi connection safer. It's as simple as that. As I've shown in this video, it offers a significant reduction in pulse rate and transmit power, which translates to a significant reduction in your radiation exposures and that's what's important so what's the optimum setup with this router you need to situate your router in a room away from where you spend long periods of time in fact that applies no matter what wi-fi device we're talking about here uh, with a regular modem router it's exactly the same thing you always want to situate it in a room away from where you spend long periods of time and in this case the beauty of this device is that you can turn and, th and that's what you need to do is to turn the transmission power down to the point where Wi-Fi coverage is still reliable and you need to schedule it so that it automatically deactivates at night and at times when you're not using it. My name is Lloyd from electricsense.com Thank you and have a great day.